हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम अर्चना तोमर आई होप यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग वीडियोज एंड एन्जॉइंग योर क्लासेस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द थर्ड पोम अ टाइगर इन द जू बाय लेजली नॉरिस लेजली नॉरिस वॉज अ फेमस वेल्स पोएट एंड शॉर्ट स्टोरी राइटर ही वॉज बॉर्न in 1921 in wales he taught at academic institutions in britain and the united states including brigham young university norris is considered one of the most important welsh writers of the post war period and his literary publications have won many prizes Let's start the poem. First stanza. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quite in his quiet rage. Students, here the poet sees the tiger in a cage. Here the poet contrast the tiger when it is in imprison in a zoo and when it is in its natural habitat so let's start with the first stanza in this stanza poet says that the tiger is bound in his cage the stripes on his body are clearly visible and bright in color his heels look like pads of velvet on his pads of velvet he walks quietly within his cage without showing his anger he walks around quietly in his cage start the second stanza he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plum deer pass here the poet says that that poor tiger should have been in his natural habitat then at this point of the night he would have been lying in the shadow of trees and sliding silently through the long grass he reaches silently to the water hole where some fat deer come to drink water now third stanza he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge bearing his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village here the poet imagines what the tiger would be doing in case he failed to find any prey in his natural habitat he says that the tiger would be growling at the edge of the jungle near some village he would be showing his white fangs and his claws while moving here and there he would become a cause of terror for the villagers actually here the poet gives a hint that if we destroy the natural habitat of tigers they will be forced to turn to our towns and villages to find their food see the fourth stanza but he looks locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors here the poet says the tiger is in the concrete cell unfortunately he is not left free in the jungle in spite of all his strength he now lies imprisoned behind the bars 
very slowly and silently he moves up and down along the length of the cage he ignores the visitors who come to the zoo to have a look at him now fifth stanza he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars in this last stanza the tiger does not take rest during the day because of the visitors even at night he remains disturbed due to the noise of the patrolling cars he keeps staring at the brilliant stars that are shining freely in the sky like his brilliant eyes now see the glossary the word meanings stalk to move quietly rage anger plump fat lurking hiding snarling to make an angry sound students now let's discuss the literary devices in the poem the first literary device is rhyme scheme that is a b c b the second one is personification in this the tiger is personified because the poet refers him as he and the next literary device is metaphor here the tiger's paws are compared with velvet students i hope you all understood the poem very well